Elliot Page comes out as trans, now Elliot Page. Nice try, Scarcella. You're not gonna get me to dead name no respected celebrity actors. <laughs> I woke up too early in the morning for you, dip shit. Uh, we did it. We lost another lesbian, guys. I was filming content for my OnlyFans page. Subscribe if you haven't already. I was filming content for my OnlyFans page and I got flooded with messages from you guys telling me that the person formerly known as Ellen Page is now going by Elliot Page. Um, they now go by he, they pronouns. They came out as trans. Let's see what's up. Hi friends, I want to share with you that I am trans. My pronouns are he and they and my name is Elliot. I can't begin to express how remarkable it feels to finally love who I am enough to pursue my authentic self. I love that I am trans and I love that I am queer. And the more I hold myself close and fully embrace who I am, the more I dream, the more my heart grows, and the more I thrive. Thank you for reading this, all my love, Elliot. My response is based- Since Scarcella is about to be all sorts of transphobic, I think it's really funny how Elliot's little come out uh, piece has, there's like nothing in it you can attack. It's nothing but love and care and self-affirmation, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, there's a reason Scarcella is only using they instead of he here. Basically this. If they, he is truly trans, good for fucking him. There is still a huge issue at large. Ooh. And that is, why are we losing all of our lesbians? Why are we not seeing this trend as frequently with gay men? I said this to Elliot on Twitter. Much respect for the Elliot page for coming- Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. There are plenty of young guys who are into guys who then realize they're trans girls. Hold on, wait. First of all, you're not losing trans women. Th this is like this is like the white people's version of white genocide, okay? Like white genocide is when white people exist and nobody's hurting them, but also there are other people. Nobody's hurting the lesbians, okay? But first first of all, um the there there are plenty so the big issue here, why aren't there gay men complaining about where all the gay guys are going? The issue is, there are. As somebody who's familiar enough with the dog shit arguments used by dumb fuck queer people like Ariel Scarcella, there are gay men who resent the increase in popularity of uh, trans women or of the transitioning to women. Because a lot of people who are now trans women 50 years ago would have just presented as extremely depressed twinkie gay men. That, those arguments exist. There are people doing that. And they're wrong too. Just let people live their lives, Jesus. Why do you think it's a more prominent thing for women though? Because most TERFs are women and TERFs are loud. If there were more, if there were more um, uh, 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 gay men who disingenuously adopt uh, progressive rhetoric to attack trans people, then you'd see the same problem equally reflected. But TERFs, who are, by the way, not feminists. Let's be, let's be real here, okay? Ariel Scarcella, Trump supporter, conservative, AOC is literally Hitler. Uh, 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 I present my lesbianism only in a way when it can be fetishized by my largely male audience. Uh, Ariel Scarcella is not exactly a shining beacon of women's liberation here. TERFs don't give a fuck about women. TERFs don't give a fuck about feminism. TERFs are just here uh, to hate. Usually, the sad thing is, TERFs are usually um, cis women who have been sexually abused or assaulted, internalized a deep hatred and disgust of people who they consider biologically male, and then assign those negative characteristics to anybody else with a penis. You know? That's, that's usually how it is. Like, you want to talk about feels and reels. Almost all of the, like, TERF shit I've seen online is rooted in some kind of isn't that reductive? I don't think so. Unironically, I don't think so. I actually think that's a huge part of it. And I know that's true because ContraPoints said it. Has ContraPoints ever been wrong? No. ContraPoints talked about how a lot of TERFs in the video she did on TERFs, many of them are inspired by um, uh, uh, abuse or assault they experienced in their youth, which led to them hating or distrusting men. And the reason they hate and distrust men is because they assign predatory intent to people with the physiology and the hormones of men. And they think trans women also share those negative characteristics. Um, that's like a super common thing. Now, 
Is that the case for every turf? Of course not, but it's definitely a general trend. I don't know if Ariel Scarcella's had any experiences that would have led to her believing that or feeling that way. I don't know how it works with regards to her, but that is a common trend with turfs. And the problem is you can't really argue against that, can you? I mean, if a person's traumatized from abuse, you can't really you can't, can't really be like, um, well, uh, actually, uh, they're women, so it's not they're not the same. In reality, it's essential to not ascribe, well, essentialist ideas to any group of people. Um, you know, because of their because of their identity or because of their presentation or demographics or whatever. Coming out as trans. I still wonder though, where are all the lesbians going? Two things can be true at once. One, some people are actually trans. Two, some lesbians are internally misogynistic and want to be anything other than a woman. I Do you really think there are a lot of lesbians doing that? That they hate being a woman so much that they transition to being a guy do you really think that's like a thing like if so wait if you hate being a woman isn't that kind of like a strong indicator that you're trans like that's kind of like a weird framing too like if you hate be so internally misogynistic can mean a lot of things you mean internally misogynistic as in you believe that women are described by their appearance and makeup and hair and bullshit and you're a butch lesbian woman and you don't want any part of that? Is that what we're talking about? But Elliot Page didn't never really came off as some sort of like anti-feminine butch person prior to his transition. So how, of what relevance is this, you know? I stand by that. Now, I've made at least two videos about this topic in the past, but for those of you who haven't seen those videos, I'm going to give you a little TLDR. There have been... Elliot Page described himself as a feminist before coming out? Well, yeah. Of, yeah, of course. Yeah. Studies recently in the last five years that followed high school teenagers. One of them showed that oh. biological women are coming out more as anything other than lesbians. Oh. Shit. What are we looking at? Adolescence F, adolescence M. Um, wait, wait, what is this? Why aren't the axes labeled? Wait. Another study showed that people that are coming out wait, as wait, trans... Wait, 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 I thought you were going to contextualize. Wait, what am I looking at here? So the Y, the y axis is number of students, I'm going to guess. And then we have the year... Evidence for large increases in females identifying as trans. So this is people who identify as trans, but are adolescents F, does this mean they identify as a trans woman or that they were born female and then they identify as trans? Wait. So what I'm going, so what I'm going to guess this terrible chart is indicating is that over time, a disproportionate number of assigned female at birth people are identifying as things other than women. Let's take a look at where this came from. Why are so many females coming out as trans slash non-binary? Here we go. Ah, from genderhq.org. A resource and community for LGBT people who want to promote the long-term physical and mental health of gender dysphoric youth. I've heard about this source before. How many genders are there, 2020? <laughs> Just added five more. Shut the fuck up. Viewpoints. We support a born in the right body cultural narrative rather than a born in the wrong body culture narrative in regards to gender non-conforming young people. A use outcome with medical body modifications versus an outcome without medical body modifications is considered value neutral by many affirmative models. 
Medical transition should be treated as a last resort while a young person's brain is still... Yeah, so they're anti-transition. Prevent any unnecessary medical treatment of minors. Informed consent model means kids can't. We believe in role modeling self-esteem based on behavior and treating people with mutual respect while de-emphasizing the importance of identity and gender. Yep. There you go. So this is one of those, why can't you just be a boy who likes to wear dresses kind of site? Yeah. It's a turf site. Really well done up one, by the way. Not the first time that I've seen this. Uh, not the first time that I've seen this uh, on stream. So yeah, this chart means nothing. In addition to this being a shit chart, I can't... Oh wait, hold on. So wait, this is sourced from somewhere else. Sex ratio in children's and adolescents refer to the Gender Identity uh, Development Service in the UK. Wait a second. Just because they refer to the Gender Identity Development Service in the UK doesn't mean they're trans. This isn't to indicate... Wait, evidence for large increases in female identifying as trans. This data doesn't support that. This is just references to a medical treatment or, or to medical analysis. Yeah, this chart is its a bad chart, and it doesn't indicate the thing this website is trying to say it indicates, and the website's biased. Nitpicking and biased. Bye-bye. I win. All right. It's enough of this waste of time. Let's move forward. Anything to other shit. than lesbians. Another study showed that people that are coming out as transgender are more likely to be accepted and protected among their peers and the educational staff. In the same breath, we are also seeing a tons of biological females transition medically and socially and then later on regretting it. Tons of detransitioners that are... Nope. Uh, as we've seen before, hold on. Study number of detransition regret gender, whatever keywords I used last time. Yep, nope, very few, literally like a fraction of a fraction of a percent of people detransition, just a complete lie, literal, literal, weaselly little liar dude, not true, fake, uh, fake news bullshit, not true. Uh, sorry, there is not some massive glut of AFAB people who are regretting their transition. There are some, and those who do regret their transition, by the way, should be taken seriously and fully taken care of. But it's not a coincidence that so many of these detransitioners end up making fucking social media careers off of becoming polemics against trans people uh, down the line. Biological females. We are not seeing this happen nearly as much with males. And of course, we're even questioning where are all the lesbians going? I get called transphobic. Somebody wrote the lesbian. This whole this video is objectively transphobic. Dude, quit whining. This video was objectively true. Come on, like it, uh, for for simply questioning the skull shape of the of the black African brain, I c considered racist. Come on, dude. Like you're 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 complaining about trans ideology stealing lesbians away for you to fuck. Okay, chill. You literally death named in the title. Come on. Like, this, this tweet that I'm looking at right now is correct. Lesbians are still here. They just don't like you because you're a transphobic piece of shit. All right, there. I think my friend Claire Very on true. Twitter nailed it, and I want to read her tweet because I think it sums it up perfectly. I find it depressing how many young lesbians now feel that because they do not perform or feel invested in conventional femininity, they can no longer be women. And so they shift from identifying as lesbian women to straight men. Compulsory heterosexuality all over again. Nope. The vast, vast, vast majority of gender non-conforming or non-cis-normative um, AFAB people are non-binary. The vast majority of people born with a pussy who then go on to not be women don't become straight men, they become bi NBs. okay? Like, let's be perfectly clear here about where this pipeline goes. Um, the, uh, like, uh, the... To a, to a massive extent. You all know that, by the way. If any of you are college age or older, you all know that's the case. And that's great. And that's fine. Whatever. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Oh, and by the way, since a lot of non-binary people don't even get transition, they don't even transition, and identity apparently means so little to these TERFs, why not just, why not just fuck some AFAB NBs? Why not just... If you can... If you can... If you can hold yourself together long enough to not dead name or misgender them you can fuck them just don't let them know you're a turf you know like i'm just saying like 
you're not being robbed of lived experiences here, okay? Life continues in spite of your abstemious uh, resistance to move with the times. I shouldn't be helping them. I really shouldn't be. Um, and so they shift from identifying as lesbian women to straight men. Um, compulsory heterosexuality all over again. So first of all, that's not the definition of compulsory heterosexuality. Compulsory heterosexuality is the social expectation that women be interested in men, which tends to lead to a lot of women not realizing they're lesbian or even bi until much later in life. Heterosexuality is not discomfort with your gender identity. To misuse the term compulsory heterosexuality to include trans straight men is ridiculous. That is a ridiculous misappropriation of that term. That is absurd. Compet does not refer to people transitioning to men. That ain't how it works at all. So yeah, this is a pretty dumb tweet from, from top to bottom. To her point, no, we are not saying that we don't think Elliot is actually trans. What we are saying is that there is a huge spike in biological females transitioning medically and socially. The fact that it's... Mo you're, com you're conflating a lot here, medically and socially. Most of the people who are going to be listed as AFAB trans people are non-transitioning, non-binary people. If your issue is with medical transition, whatever, maybe you're not tra attracted, fine, whatever, it doesn't matter. Frankly, none of this matters. Why the fuck should other people's identities be beholden to your desire to have more lesbians to fuck? Like, what, like, can somebody explain to me where the priorities are at? Why the fuck does any of this matter? Why should any trans guy give a single shit about a turf wanting to get her fucking pussy ate by, by a statistically wider margin of the population? Like, why, why does this matter at all? mostly about 90% females, is a red flag for us. We are saying that yes, obviously trans men do exist, and yes, obviously trans men transition to hopefully alleviate or cure their gender dysphoria, and it has nothing to do with internalized misogyny. We know that trans people are real and trans people exist. What we are saying uh -huh. is that there are also a lot of people that are medically and socially transitioning or just simply identifying as anything other than women because of internalized misogyny. Or because- Can you prove that? Like at all? Can you demonstrate that? Because you haven't demonstrated that. Can you indicate there's some glut of people becoming NB because they hate, because they're misogynistic against themselves or trans or whatever? Can you demonstrate that in some way? Follow-up question. How do you, Ariel Scarcella, distinguish between a real trans guy and the confused, internally misogynistic, compat, faker, bio girl. Oh, you're not going to distinguish between those in this video, are you? You're just going to say there's a pandemic, you acknowledge some trans men are real, but you're not going to say what criteria you can use to distinguish? Oof. Kind of makes it seem as though you're leaving it up wide enough so people could levy these criticisms against everyone, including Elliot Page, then, huh? Bosh isn't even one person becoming an NB. I don't know what that means in order to not be a lesbian too much. Nobody's becoming, nobody is identifying as non-binary to avoid being lesbian. Being lesbian is chic and fashionable, okay? Everyone loves, lesbian, that's the, the freshest, the Gucci fit right now, okay? Nobody, yeah, there are NB lesbians, but no, nobody is so, nobody is AFAB. And, and likes uh, women, and they're like, ah, but I hate, but I'm misogynistic against women. I, and, and I don't want to be gay, so I'll be envy. I don't want to be gay, so I'll transition. That'll earn me more social respect. What are we even talking about here? At the end of the day, this is just Ariel Scarcella, uh, mad there are fewer people that she can fuck and get away with fucking. So she probably had a crush on Elliot Page back when Elliot identified as a woman, and now she's mad about it, and she's trying to post hoc justify this with some sort of imaginary plague affecting AFAB people. It's not happening. Because of internalized lesbophobia. Oh my god, look at that. Turfs and starts to shaming is trending on Twitter at the Bro, moment. Okay, and stay mad, motherfucker. Ah, turf is a slur to silence us. I wish. Shut up. People that are participating in these trends are wondering why the rate of LGBT acceptance is down. They are
It is not. That is a lie. Hmm. By the way, that's um. That is an interesting point for a so-called feminist to take. Uh, that aggressive rhetoric is leading to the cis hets not liking us anymore. Hmm. Uh, sounding like some controlled opposition over there, Ariel Scarcella. Are wondering why so many people? I think 73 million people voted for Trump because they are sick of the bullshit. They want. Oh uh, no, we got it back, people. The reason 73 million people voted for Trump is because they looked ahead four years into the future and saw that a Twitter hashtag trend called start cis shaming would go uh, viral after Elliot Page transitioned. That's why. Yeah, bro, people totally voted for Trump because of the pandemic of lesbians turning into AFAB NBs. That's... What the fuck are you talking... Notice how seamlessly she went from complaining about compet and internalized misogyny to complaining about woke PC trans shaming. Dude, to a Trump supporter, mentioning the term compulsive heterosexuality will also get you thrown in with the SJWs. You realize that, right, Scarcella? Drive them into my mouth. You dumb fuck. If you start using terms like compulsive heterosexuality is leading to a decline in the social acceptance of lesbians, you will also get branded as the reason people voted for Trump. You're not amongst allies right now. You've alienated both sides, my friend. By the way, that's the reason why her grift fell through so fucking quickly. Remember back when she did this Why I'm Leaving the Left video and it got a bajillion views? Look at the views now. 15,000 views for a video with AOC and a Hitler mustache on the cover. That shit, the, the AOC with a Hitler mustache on the cover, that's like a views magnet right there. Even the classic anti-SGW, stop trying to make he, him, lesbians happen, Muslim, feminists, the whole thing. Even these are getting nothing. Even her porn bait video, 68,000 views, lesbian explores BDSM. This is for a channel with two thirds of a million subscribers. Two thirds of a million subscribers. Oh, this one got 1.2 million. She knows her body so well she can do this. And it's a video of a woman bent over a bed in tight clothes with her ass out while another woman leans subjective, su suggestively in with her palm pointed towards her crotch, okay? That's what that's where we're getting the, the views from. I'm a lesbian woman. I'm leaving the insane left. Remember when I covered this and it had like... Yeah, it, ha it was like the anti-SJW compilation from 2015, fucking reduxed. Incredible. But the grift fell through pretty much immediately. Give me that social blade. Where are you at, Scarcella? Scarcella. Ah, oh, that's what I like to see. Deleted a bunch of videos, down 10 million views, down to about 1.2 uh, million video views a month. That's about a tenth of what I get, for reference. Uh, yeah, everything down, low, fall, gone. Can we get, can we get the, the trends? Here, hold on. Sorry, I am very contemptuous of this person specifically, because I was going to debate her and blow her the fuck out, but then she saw that I was mean to her in a video, so, um, so she backed out and blocked me on Twitter. So I have to compensate. The best part about grifters like her is if she ever accused me of being misogynistic for calling her a bitch, then I could, um, uh, uh, then I could accuse her of being the reason why Trump won. Yeah, things have just completely flatlined. Damn, those legacy channels get such a boost, though. Holy shit. Why is she saying we can be racist to black conservatives? Hold on. New incog window, because she blocked me, so I can't see it regularly. Now, I am autistic, but I feel like this might be sarcasm, my friend. If you're white and a liberal, it's totally okay to be racist against a black conservative. Damn, she's the reason why Trump won. All right, chill. Let's finish this stupid fucking video. Anyway, the point that I'm getting at right now is that her grift can't really, like, sustain itself that well. It doesn't, like, work that well long-term at all. Because she can't, like, how, 
How can you, in the same video, complain about Compet and then also complain about the reasons why Trump won? Like, because of SJWs. It's so weird. I wonder why creators like myself, Blair White, and a few others constantly create content to damage control. Because honestly, we are afraid to lose our rights, and even more so. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. There are so many layers to this. First of all, doing a video on how all trans people who aren't as pretty as you are sexual predators is not damage control for the trans community. What damage control do you do for lesbians? Like, at all? Where... You mean covering cringy 14-year-olds on TikTok? That's damage control? Also, I remember when Blair White wrote, wrote that post-millennial article after Trump just randomly removed medical protections for trans people, and uh, Blair White wrote that article. It was two minutes long about how actually this isn't bad for trans people. These people are fucking crazy, dude, but they're grifters. They don't give a shit about anything they say. Ariel Scarcella, Blair White, they're all the same subset of, like, fucking 40 IQ turncoat tokens who will do absolutely anything to earn their AdSense paycheck at the end of the day. They don't give a fuck if they're the last lesbian and trans person standing. Our sanity at this point, let's be real. There's absolutely nothing wrong with not feeling like the other girls. And in fact, that's what? totally normal. However, there is something the is obviously wrong in how many girls are now identifying as non-binary. And let's not forget- Who the fuck is this person? Forget how many lesbians are now identifying as non-binary and queer. I mean, imagine coming out as a lesbian today. Imagine saying, hey, I'm same-sex attracted. I know it sounds really crazy, but doing that today is really controversial and in fact- yeah, because real, regular lesbians don't say I'm same-sex attracted, like, after saying they're lesbian. And that's not controversial. Wait, hold, wait, hold on. There are, like, so many layers to this. First of all, nobody says, hi, I'm a lesbian, that means I'm same-sex attracted, unless you're in a fucking turf bar, okay? Secondly, even if you did say that, nobody would have an issue with it. What do you mean? Hey, I'm lesbian, I, I like other women, I'm same-sex attracted, whatever. No, nobody cares. Nobody cares. What are you talking about? In fact, would get you a lot of hate from the LGBT community. What gets me about celebrities such no. as no. Elliot Page, formerly known as Ellen Page, isn't that they're coming out as non-binary. I think this is the trans dude that voted for Trump that RGR debated. Wait! Is this the guy who made the video on how I was misogynistic to Ariel Scarcella and he made the video about it? Was this that guy? Oh, the deep lore. I've got, I've got roots in the YouTube community now. What the fuck is this guy's name? He's got to be linked here. Mars, trans guys, bitches. Yes! How far back do I have to go before I show up? I remember! Yeah, the simp! Where, 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 where? Where, where, where? Oh, I know I'm here. I'm somewhere here. A lot, of, a lot of Zoom calls in here. Okay. I mean, we're all practicing social distancing. I guess that's good. Huh? Wait, did I miss it? I missed it? Where did I, where did I miss it? Where did I, here we go. My response to Vosh and Ariel Scarcella. That's right. And this video was literally... This... Oh, it's so amazing. These people are like, uh, this, these woke trans activists are the reason why people voted for Trump. But this guy made a 43-minute long video. You know what the basic gist of the argument was? I can't criticize Ariel Scarcella because I'm a man. That's literally it. That's unironically it. The actual thrust of the video was, I'm a bigot for criticizing her because she's a lesbian woman and I'm a man. Dude, the shamelessness with which these people use idpol to their discretion is unbelievable. But to be honest, this guy seems to me like really, really, really low IQ. So I don't know if it's even worthwhile to pick on them. There's another video. There's the other one. The most woke bros. I remember this. So many people want to dogpile her specifically. Dude, trans women. Calling out this guy. Trans stuff. Zan? Not nearly oh. as much as like Vosh, for example, but sure. he's definitely put out like, you know, a fairly decent amount here. So my point here overall is. Where's me? That she needs a year, which was their right to talk about that. It's. Like, how do you not see oh, there we go. transgender shit? And nobody's calling out this guy. Nobody's going to call him out. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, this guy gets a pass. Ariel, shut up. Like, I, I just, dude, how do, you, like, how do you not see how disgusting it is to, to tell a woman to shut up, but all the dudes can just talk about whatever the fuck they want? Um, this is why Trump won. 
but that there is definitely a trend that we're seeing here, right? A lot of girls are identifying as non-binary. Why is that? Why is it controversial to say that? A lot of girls who happen to be lesbians would rather opt out of calling themselves a lesbian and call themselves queer, which is really just for the inclusion of other people. Hey, remember when conservatives were supposed to be all about radical individualism and not giving in to group identity, but now Ariel Scarcella is unironically trying to shame these people for expressing individual identity? So why is it? Why is it so bad? And oh so my God, I just re if I guarantee you, if Ariel Scarcella was doing a debate on race issues and I made the argument that people like Candace Owens uh, uh, experienced internalized racism, she would call me a racist for assuming that about Candace Owens. And she would say, why can't black women disagree with you? But she'll unironically argue that trans men are being motivated by internalized misogyny. Oh God, I'm going to God, these people, they're like... They're like Gordian knots of inconsistency. They're like fucking Klein bottles. You, you, you have to run around in circles forever. Ah. So wrong to say that you're a woman. Why is it so bad and wrong to say that you're a lesbian today? I also find this kind no, of funny. No one's saying it's bad and wrong. The only people who are saying it's bad and wrong are, are, are conservatives because they tend to be the anti-feminists and the anti-LGBT types that this is happening a few days after the major court case in London with Kira Bell. Yeah, For those who don't that. know, Kira Bell, the case is about gender nonconforming youth in the UK. TLDR, again, Kira Bell is a gender nonconforming lesbian who was put on testosterone because she thought she was transgender at just 16 years old, later on regretting it. In fact, statistics show that 75% of people grow out of gender dysphoria by the age of 25. Wrong! I know exactly what bunk study she's referring to there and that is a complete falsehood literally like I, I can't so normally when i say that is wrong i can give you like a more contextually appropriate explanation of that data Be, so like so they're misrepresenting it in this case it's literally just fake it's just a fake number they just invented and it's completely not true like not even remotely is there anything linked to some of the studies oh give me the studies Rawr. How peer contagion may play into the rise of teen girls transitioning. Okay, so this is the rapid onset gender dysphoria thing, a term invented by one person in one study that was widely discredited after the fact. Yep, here we go. Lisa Littman. Yep, 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 yep. This is that one study. That one study that's so bad that I actually put it in a section of my document that has only two sources inside of it. Studies to watch out for. And here we go. Rapid onset gender dysphoria. From Lisa Littman. Yep. It's just a complete mess of a study. It's worthless. Anyone who cites it should be laughed out of the room. Just absolutely laughed out of the room. More U.S. teens identify as transgender survey finds. Interesting. So no document here which indicates that 75% of people grow out of gender dysphoria. So nothing. Now, I will say this. I think there was at one point a study that indicated that, like, of everyone who's ever had any thoughts questioning their gender identity, only a quarter of them ended up being trans. But that is not the same as everyone who gets gender affirming surgery of, of them, 75% end up regretting them. It was literally like, uh, like if you've ever thought like a little bit about maybe being a girl or a boy, if you aren't already a girl and a boy, then you get added to this list, and of those people, only a quarter actually ended up being transgender. But that has literally nothing to do with what we're talking about. That's the reason why the process for transitioning involves extensive and long-term medical supervision. This is probably because people don't reach full brain development until the age of around 25. Kira went to court in London this October to fight- Or if you're Ario Scarcella, you never do for gender non-conforming youth against the system currently put in place over in the UK. Okay, well, we, we already went over this court ruling in another segment, so I feel like this is kind of redundant. Peace. Let me know what you guys think. We're continuing this conversation over on slug.com slash Ariel. Go and sign up. Nope, you're not advertising off me. Also, wow. For, some, for a turf, I don't know, having an OnlyFans feels a little bit weird. How do you... <laughs> as... There's so many conflicting ideas here, you know? How do you believe that all the lesbians are disappearing, but then you, you know, and, you, and you're tired of internalized misogyny, but then you pander to the male gaze? 
maybe Ariel Scarcella markets her uh, um, OnlyFans as like a pro lesbian space where it's like, oh yeah, dude, you know, when you're when you're booting up the lesbian section on Pornhub, you know who's watching that? It's all women. That's that's it's all women who are looking at that. Turf not swerf, maybe. Well, it doesn't really. I can make fun of her for being ideologically inconsistent, but she's a Trump supporter who calls herself an LGBT activist. The only thing we really have, the only thing we have to celebrate here, okay, is the fact that her channel's doing poorly. Because I guarantee you, she wouldn't have that OnlyFans if her channel wasn't slacking. Anyway, Godspeed, Ariel Scarcella. If you, by the way, if you ever want to come on, you ever want to come on, you're totally free to, okay, totally free to. Uh, I won't even yell at you. I'll commit to not yelling at you, unless you yell first. We can talk about all of your bad ideas. You know. Maybe uh, maybe I can give you a boost with my audience. 